All right, this time we're going to look at kinematic equations. And we use kinematic equations to describe motion. And, and when we're doing this, we get all of our motion description from velocity versus time graphs. And so in order to describe motion, because kinematic basically means movement, in order to describe motion, we're going to use equations. We're going to have four equations that we're going to use that come from velocity versus time graphs. In class, we covered one of them already, and it was the equation that goes with a uh, trapezoid. And now we're going to cover uh, a few more, and we're going to list all of them here, uh, make sure we cover all of the variables, things we can get from velocity versus time graphs, and then uh, do an example and, and, a, and a process on how to solve these things. So right here we have a velocity versus time graph, and from a velocity versus time graph, we know that slope of velocity versus time is acceleration. And, then with the, and we also know that the area under the curve is displacement. So our first equation that we get is V equals V naught plus AT, which is the same thing as acceleration, uh, equals the change in velocity over time. And here what we have is, uh, you can see the line on a velocity versus time graph, the y-intercept is the initial velocity. Uh, we finish with a final velocity, and it happens over some time. So we're able to write in the linear regression formula y equals mx plus b an equation by substituting in our variables into those placeholders where y is a placeholder, m is a placeholder, x is a placeholder, and b is a placeholder. So b being the y-intercept, we use v naught and put that in there. And then the slope of velocity versus time we should know is acceleration, so we place that where m is. Uh, on the x-axis, we have time, so we place t in, in, that, in that spot. And then our final um, point is the final velocity here, because that is the highest we went in the y direction. And so we're able to write an equation. It's not in the exact order of y equals mx plus b. It's actually in the order of y equals b plus mx. But we just reorganized it to where it looks a little bit cleaner. That way we can quickly go to acceleration equals change of velocity over time. Now, change in velocity, uh, if you haven't memorized this by now, you need to recognize that change of velocity is its own equation and memorize it, where change of velocity equals final minus initial or final minus the original velocity, and, and, and really get good at understanding that change in velocity is always the final minus initial. So that is our first equation, and we get it by writing an equation for a line in the form of linear regression formula. The second one is v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a change in x. Um, this equation is, is something that uh, we, I'm, I'm not going to show you on this video. Uh, if you really are interested in figuring out where it comes from, feel free to come talk to me. Uh, but this equation does not deal with time, and we're just going to give that one to you. Now, the third one uh, is dealing with the two shapes that this line makes up when you take the area under the curve. And... Instead of treating it like a trapezoid, which we did in class, we are now going to split it into two different shapes where we have a rectangle and, and then a triangle. Uh, and the triangle has the area under that curve is displacement, and then we do one half the base times the height. Um, the base here being t, and the height being the change in velocity, which ends up being basically acceleration over time. Um, Acceleration times time, not over time. My bad. Uh, so then we, what we are able to do is rewrite that equation where change in x equals one-half a times t and then another t, which t times t is t squared. So taking those two equations we have there in the black at the top where x equals vt and x equals one-half a t squared, we rewrite them by adding them both together where we have v naught t plus one-half a t squared. And this is where our third equation comes from. And then the fourth equation that we did in class comes from the area of a trapezoid. And we, we've already covered this one. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, we, we recognize that V is final velocity, that V naught is initial velocity, acceleration is A, time is T, Change in x is change in position, horizontally in this case. Uh, we'll do it later where it's change in y as well because that'll be vertically, and we call that displacement. Uh, change in x or change in y are both displacement. 
and those are our variables that we're going to use. Now I'm going to teach you a problem solving method. The problem solving method that we're going to work with in here is what we call the guess method. It doesn't mean that you get to guess on all your problems, which some people get excited about and I don't understand, but it's the guess method. What it is is it's basically an acronym. We take our givens, find out our unknown, figure out which equation we're going to use, we simplify that equation, and then we solve. So the first thing we're going to do about using the guess method is we're going to just jump right into an example. So in our example, we're going to have a skydiver, and the skydiver is slowing down because his parachute has been released. Uh, so he's traveling at 52 meters per second, and he's going to slow down to 8 meters per second. So he's traveling in a downward direction, um, and he's slowing down. Uh, and he does that in 0.8 seconds, and that happens as the parachute opens. So right as the parachute opens, he quickly slows from 52 to 8 meters per second. And what, uh, what we're, I keep saying he, um, we're worried about his or her acceleration, so I used her here. Um, so we write down all of our givens. What we're given is that the initial velocity was 52 meters per second, the final velocity was 8 meters per second, and time was 8 seconds. And then our unknown was acceleration. So the thing we got to do here is figure out which equation to use. Uh, there's two ways to do this. The first being you have four variables listed there. You have three under G, so V naught, V, and T, and then you have your unknown A, and you go find the equation that has those exact four variables, which here is equation one, or you recognize that this, the, of, of our givens and our unknown, we don't have displacement and you go over there and look at all the equations and find the one equation that doesn't have displacement and if you look equation 2 has displacement equation 3 has displacement equation 4 has displacement and equation 1 does not so that's another way to find your your equation that you need to use it's either find the equation that has the exact 4 that you have or find the equation that has the one thing that you're missing so here we're missing displacement go find the equation that's missing displacement so the equation we're going to use is v equals v naught plus a t we simplify that by solving for a. When we solve for a, we get a equals the change in velocity over time. I went ahead and wrote it where v minus v naught. And then we solve it. Write it over here. Where final velocity is 8, initial is 52, and then the change in time is 0.8 seconds. So what we end up with is negative 55 meters per second squared or 55 meters per second squared up. The acceleration is up. It's a deceleration. We're going in a downward direction. Uh, we, we have talked in class about how having a downward direction is uh, typically a negative number, but in this case we can change our frame of reference and we'll cover this more in class about how we can change our frame of reference. Uh, and we're using the frame of reference down as positive, which would then in turn make up to be negative. So if we're using down as positive when the acceleration is acting in the opposite direction, it's a negative number, so negative 55 meters per second squared works. Or you can just write the magnitude, which is 55 meters per second squared, and then den denote a direction by writing the word up. Either one works. Um, but the key here is being able to problem solve. So we have described what has happened uh, for this skydiver. She was slowing down and we're able to describe it with an equation. We were able to calculate her acceleration and recognize that her acceleration was in the upward direction and she was going in a downward direction when she jumped out of her airplane or was base jumping or whatever the case may be. So we were able to describe her motion with kinematic equations. Uh, in class, we'll do a little bit more practice with this and then we'll move on to free fall.